Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Friday, June 29th, 2012, and I'm Darko. This is my website, ggnonline.com. Um, there's a poll up there, you can check on it and vote how long until a drone kills the first American on uh, American soil. So far, the majority are saying within the next year, followed by the next two years. Um, you can follow GGN with your email address, also on YouTube, ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. And if you'd like to help, you can donate right there. So, and I'll, I'll, there's also a little news archive there. So, I'm ready to go here, and we're going to cover the economy. Um, and the biggest news, of course, is Obamacare approved. It was kind of shelved for a while there, and now it's back from the dead. So, and a little bit of eugenics, because, you know, you have financial warfare, and then you have social warfare, you have eugenics, and it kind of all just is immersed, right, in the same uh, global agenda. So it says here, Obamacare approved IRS to force Americans to buy health insurance. It says a victory for Obama and a travesty for the middle class. The Supreme Court upheld Obama's health care mandate, empowers the IRS to begin to regulate America's health care by 2014. Expect IRS thugs armed with shotguns knocking at your door to fine you almost $700 a person or $2,000 per household for failure to purchase health insurance if you fail to pay the outrageous fine expect to be sued by the IRS. It says here that revised health care laws remove the penalty of almost a quarter of a million dollars in imprisonment up to five years. It says here this ruling allows the federal government to force citizens to enter a contract with private corporations to buy health insurance. This is happening just days before the 4th of July when Americans won its independence from British tyranny and now we face the same tyranny today. It says here by 2014, all Americans will have to submit or face being fined and sued by the Internal Revenue Service. The American people are already struggling financially with record unemployment, inflation, and trillions of dollars in national debt. By the time health insurance becomes mandatory, the middle class will be financially bankrupt. This is the reason why the military and police are preparing for martial law in the U.S. streets, says because people will revolt against the system that has turned into a basically turn people into financial slaves. So it says here that they're conditioning Americans with checkpoints and speed traps, army drones to spy on us. We're going to cover all this, rolling out the tanks and putting military goons on residential streets to prepare us for what is uh, to come in the future. It says here the Bilderberg Group discussed in Spain about wanting to level America into a third world impoverished nation where we're all poor under world government dictatorship. It says here soon Americans' standard of living will drop significantly and it won't just be the standard of living, it will be their um, their age of death, right? Their um, basically the average lifespan. It says here services will be cut. I, we're going to get into that too, death pathway and stuff like that. Uh, taxes will be uh, increased until we become so poor that we are unable to fight and resistance will be futile. Does Americans uh, issue split decision on health care ruling nearly two-thirds believe politics played too great a role? So it says Americans are sharply divided over Thursday's Supreme Court decision on the 2010 health care law with 46% agreeing and 46% disagreeing with the high court's ruling that the law is constitutional. Then you have from the Daily Bail, Obamacare complicated. Check out the flow chart. And uh, yeah, there's our buddy the IRS right there. But it's just a god-awful mess, and you have Secretary of Health and Human Services in the middle, all these different um, invested interests, all these different bureaucracies, and um, the biggest invested interest that helped write the bill was the insurance companies, and they're the ones that are going to uh, basically, how could you say, not profit. Well, they will profit, but they're going to get the best advantage from this, right? And if you would like an anarchist perspective, on the whole Obamacare thing. I think uh, Stefan Molyneux did a pretty good uh, analysis of this. I think he held back a lot. I think he's gone over it and made his point so many times, so many times his argument, that he was actually kind of um, just laid back about it. So it's kind of nice. It's 18 minutes, not too long. The truth about Obamacare, yes, it's even worse than you think. And right here in the description, he puts in there the six facts that he presents in his argument. So fact one, there is no law in the U.S. anymore. Basically, what he's saying is that if they could just do anything, then there's no law, right? And it's tricky because, in quote, in a stateless society, there would be what? No law. Well, there would still be common law. See, this isn't common law. This is political law. That's why you have pigs, political law enforcement, and uh, the, the like that are going to be enforcing this, a federal agents in that. So, in other words, what he's saying is, is that you might as well just have... Uh, no government because right here you have a dictatorship with quote laws right they have laws 
that basically write in a dictatorship. So we have here uh, Obamacare is an omission that all previous government health care programs have failed. So, and this is true. I remember the recording, uh, you know, about Nixon and stuff like that, getting people on Medicaid. It doesn't really matter whether it's good or not. And in fact, three costs have already doubled from initial estimates, and that's usually how it works. As soon as this gets closer to fruition, oh yeah, some hidden costs. Sorry, guys. In fact, four seventy percent plus of healthcare issues result from individual choice. So the thing about it, he's talking about smoking, um, drinking, uh, eating, uh, basically a lot of bad food and stuff like that. You can actually help. But a lot of these people that are going to, uh, quote, benefit from this are not going to be doing anything to help their own health, right? So it says here, the inability to discriminate on pre-existing conditions is an essential driver of health care cost. So I think what he's saying there is it's not very free market. It says here, the fines for non-compliance are destined to rise enormously. And we have 15 reasons why the Obamacare decision is a mind-blowing disaster for America it was actually, yeah, it says here it was voted 5-4 decision to uphold the, uh, the vote. And it says here, the bill, it says here the swing vote was Chief Justice John Roberts, who was appointed by George Bush, W. Bush. And not that you'd have any confidence in the judicial system as it stands, just based off, you know, past history and their track record. It says here, after the vote today, it is hard to have any faith in the U.S. Supreme Court. I guess they're saying because, what, it's, quote, conservative. According to the Supreme Court, the federal government has the power to force you to buy private goods and services. And it goes on and says here that it's another, another step away from individual liberty, another step towards a nanny state. I hate that word. But uh, it says here IRS is now going to be given the task of hunting down and penalizing Americans. And it says here, in fact, the Obama administration has given the IRS $500 million extra dollars outside the normal appropriation process to help them enforce the provisions of Obamacare they are in charge of overseeing. It imposes more than 20 new taxes on the American people. And uh, you can click the link there. If you cl click the, uh, the title of this article, you can find it and uh, check it out. So it says here, uh, number five, an attempt to control costs and promote efficiency. Obamacare limits the treatment options that doctors and patients can consider. In other words, the death pathway, right? The British system, this is likely to result in a decrease in life expectant expectancy. That's what I was talking about in the United States in the beginning of this video. So, so yeah, it's going to send health insurance premiums soaring, especially for younger Americans. And, uh, you know, it's going to crush small businesses, as they say. And number nine, Obamacare is going to make the emerging, emerging doctor shortage in America a lot worse. So... Hundreds of thousands of doctors are leaving the medical profession because of this. It says here it's already forced the cancellation of dozens of doctor-owned hospitals. And it says here that the following is one example from the Alliance Defense Fund. It's an insidious little provision. It says here, did you know that this uh, bill, you'll have to pay for life-saving drugs, but life drugs are free. So 100% free. If this plan were really about health care, it wouldn't be about, it would be the other way around. So yeah, it's like robbing, what, robbing from the future to pay for the living. So and it just turns into a god-awful mess. You know, it's not even just politics. It's generational. 13 reasons why the revolution might start with Obamacare. Go in there and check that out. I'll just name a few, and you can hopefully go in there and check it out. It says here that's a direct tax, which is unconstitutional under Article 1, Section 9. And you can go in there and read that. It says here it violates states' rights since federal government does not have the constitutional authority to take over health care as stated in the Tenth Amendment outlined in the Bill of Rights. This mandate is involuntary servitude or slavery to big banks and insurance industries, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as punishment for a crime whereof the party shall be duly convicted. Uh, basically, the Thirteenth Amendment. So, so yeah, that's I mean that's the federal government's Fourth uh, of July Independence Day present to Americans. It's pretty crazy. I mean, you think the timing of this was uh, just happen happenstance? I bet it isn't. You know, let's just show you. Just give you a big middle finger right right in front of your face. Stagnating life expectancies in the United States. Poor U.S. citizens live five years less than the affluent, but they don't talk. You know, what about the middle class, right? So despite modest gains in lifespan over the past century, the United States still uh, trails many of the world countries when it comes to life expectancy. We remember this article, Top Doctors Chilling Claim the NHS Kills Off 130,000 Elderly Patients Every Year. The says here, a professor says doctors use death pathway to euthanasia 
uh, of elderly. It says here that uh, Liverpool Care Pathway, Death Pathway, may be slippery slope to backdoor euthanasia. This is from 2009 from the Telegraph. It says here that the patient assessment it selects those deemed close to death for withdrawal of food and fluids or being placed on a continuous sedation until they die off. Next up, we have another little example. Doctor said this individual was a typical lazy teenager. Actually, she had an aggressive form of cancer. So it goes on here and says that she was finally diagnosed after she had an MRI scan following a fall. So basically, she was left undiagnosed for six months after doctors uh, mistook her symptoms for typical teenager laziness. So as cancer rates soar due to the eugenics and that, um, I see these articles, you know, European meeting to be held to raise awareness of the eugenic current of European society held in Strasbourg, France. It's hosted by the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, or PACE, this week to address the alleged eugenic current of European society and eugenics and human rights issue, issues of prenatal screening. It says here, currently the highest court in Europe is considering a complaint from a woman who claims that she was not given a prenatal screening, which would have revealed her daughter's Down syndrome and thus allow her to choose to abort her child. They didn't go into this, which is what, Scottish toddlers to be tested to see if they will grow up to be drug addicts or criminals. So they're going to basically examine them to determine their capacity for violent crime, to be violent. But what happens when this comes to the UK? Thailand violent students to be drafted into our army automatically. And another possibility is this. Desperate Europeans try to sell kidneys and lungs, lungs being offered for as much as $250,000 as Europeans are gra grappling with the economic misery. Illegal organ sales are on the rise with desperate sellers willing to uh, basically part with their kidneys, corneas, bone marrow, and even lungs to put food on the table. Because here, organized criminal groups are preying upon the vulnerable on both sides of the supply chain. So they're not just talking about Israel, they're talking about internet ads spotted across Italy, Spain, Greece, Russia. And the, you know, people leave comments about euthanasia. I, don't, you know, it's like I don't have a moral issue with somebody carrying out euthanasia um, as long as there's some kind of consent there. The only issue I have for it or with it, and that's why I bring it up, is when it's in the government's hands where, you know, where you have a government legislating morality, they can't do that, like the death penalty. So I don't support the death penalty. Uh, with euthanasia, if you're declared uh, a violent or criminal or deviant or drugged, uh, you know, going to be a drug dealer, well then they can go ahead and euthanize you and then they can sell your body parts. And that's probably already going on in Asia and parts of the world, but uh, what happens when people want to sell their entire bodies, right, a one-time donation or they could just sell their entire body and have it just basically, um, as they say, cannibalize for different parts? I mean, it sounds nice on the surface to help out your family and stuff like that, but that's, talk about preying on the vulnerable, man. Then we have this guy, Jim Rogers, saying that uh, financial Armageddon will happen despite the EU deal. 